You've probably seen or heard this recording before. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's Neil Armstrong, speaking his iconic first words after becoming the first man to set foot on the moon. But what you may not know about this recording is that the device that transmitted Neil's voice from the moon to Earth was actually developed by Motorola. This may come as a surprise if, like most people, you only know Motorola for its phones. But the truth is, back in the day, Motorola used to be at the forefront of technological innovation, from making the world's first successful car radios, to inventing the walkie-talkies used in World War II, from designing the transmitters used by NASA, to inventing and manufacturing the world's first ever cell phone. Motorola did it all. So what happened? How did the company that literally invented cell phones go from being top dog in the industry to today having just 3% global market share? And what are they doing to finally fight back and try to re-establish themselves? This is the story of the rise and fall of Motorola. Well, kinda. Because as you're about to discover, it might not be the fall you think it is. But we'll get to that shortly. Hello, Moto. So, the story of Motorola actually starts with failure. Back in the 1920s, entrepreneur Paul Galvin's company was failing. You see, Paul was a much better engineer than a businessman. He understood tech better than most. Problem was, he just wasn't very good at selling it. This was actually Paul's second failed business. His first company, the D&G Storage Battery Company, sold, yep, you guessed it, battery products. Now, you might think that, having failed with that business, the second time around he might try selling a different product, but no. Paul's second company, the Stewart Battery Company, also sold batteries. And this time, yet again, Paul found himself with huge debts that he couldn't repay, which is why the business and all of its assets was put up for auction in a liquidation sale. But even though his business wasn't profitable, Paul really believed in one product more than any other, battery eliminators. You see, these were the days before TVs. At night, families would all huddle around a radio, listening intently to every word broadcast over the airwaves. But the problem was, radios ran on batteries, not household current. And batteries, especially in those days, ran out fast, which is where battery eliminators came in. Battery eliminators were a brand new technology that allowed you to take your battery powered radio and plug it into the wall, converting direct current into alternating current. No more running out of batteries. This was a big deal, and Paul was convinced it would change the world forever. So he took a huge risk. He borrowed $750 and purchased back the battery eliminator division of his failed business. Together with his brother Joseph, they set up a new company and called it the Galvin Manufacturing Corporation. This would soon become the Motorola we know today. Now, for a time, with Joseph's help, it looked like Paul's bet would pay off. Battery eliminators did indeed become very popular. Their company was finally making money. But then Paul hit yet another roadblock, the Great Depression. Just like that, with the economy in turmoil, sales of battery eliminators ground to a halt. The Galvin brothers knew they had to act fast, to galvanize, if you will. They needed something else to sell, so they set their sights on car radios. Why car radios? Well, Paul knew that there was a huge opportunity to improve what was currently on the market. At the time, car radios also had an extremely limited range, but more annoying than the range was the fact that you couldn't listen to the radio while you were driving. The car engine interfered with the radio signal. So, in 1930, with the help of a talented engineer they'd recruited to the company, the Galvin Manufacturing Corporation invented a brand new radio that solved both the range and the interference problems. They called it the Motorola Car Radio, and it became the world's first ever commercially successful car radio. The Motorola Car Radios ended up becoming so popular that 17 years later, the Galvin brothers decided to rename their entire company after them. The Motorola brand was born, and the rest is history. In 1940, they invented the world's first walkie-talkie, then known as a handy-talkie, after correctly predicting the need for a device that would allow soldiers to communicate with each other over long distances on foot. The earliest versions of the handy-talkie were so bulky they had to be worn like backpacks. 
but these devices allowed soldiers to communicate in a range 20 times the distance that any other technology allowed at the time. But walkie-talkies were just the start. In 1947, Motorola began manufacturing TVs. They were actually one of the first companies in the world to do so, and they became a major player in the industry by selling their models cheaper than most other options in the market. Motorola were on a roll, and by the time Paul sadly passed away in 1959, the company was making more than $200 million in sales annually. But with Paul's son, Robert, now at the helm, their technological and commercial success would only continue. In fact, in 1969, when NASA were looking for a company they could trust to relay communication back from the moon, Motorola was the natural choice. And as if this resume wasn't impressive enough already, in 1973, Motorola invented the world's first ever cell phone, the Dynatac. Crazy, right? The cell phone in your pocket, heck, the cell phone you might be watching this video on right now, owes its very existence to Motorola. They invented not just a phone, but the entire cell phone industry, and in doing so, changed the world forever. But why does it sound like I'm describing a totally different company here? This is clearly not the Motorola we know today. So, what happened? Unfortunately, for Motorola, the early 2000s is when their streak of success came to an end, and one of the main reasons for their decline was Apple. When Steve Jobs introduced the world to the iPhone in 2007, no one could have predicted the impact it would have on Motorola, and in particular their iconic phone, the Motorola Razr. The Razr was the most popular phone at the time, selling over 130 million units globally. But within weeks of its release, the iPhone completely blew Motorola and all other competition out of the water. By April 2010, just three years after release, Apple had grown to 46% US market share. Motorola's share shrank to a meager 6.3%. Of course, it didn't help that Motorola's response to the iPhone was so slow. It took them two whole years to release their answer to the iPhone, the Droid. Two years, that's like a decade in the smartphone world. And even though the Droid turned out to be a pretty decent phone for the time, the writing was on the wall. Motorola was a company that simply couldn't compete against Apple, so why were they so slow to react? You'd have thought that the former leader of the industry would have the resources to put up a better fight, right? Well, the truth was, Motorola had become too large. They were too bureaucratic. They had a lot of divisions and a lot of layers of middle management, and this gave more agile companies like Apple, Samsung, and LG an edge because, while Motorola may take years to react to evolving market trends, the other companies could all adapt much quicker. Motorola knew they had to take drastic measures. So, in 2011, Motorola split itself into two smaller companies. Motorola Solutions, which made communication and security products, and Motorola Mobility, which handled Motorola's smartphone division. Sadly, this was too little, too late, and Motorola Mobility's profits kept bleeding, which is when Google reached out. Google? Huh? You see, at the time, Google was embroiled in a patent war against Apple, and Google knew that for all their weaknesses, Motorola still had one major thing going for them. Their patents. Motorola had one of the biggest patent portfolios of the time for wireless mobile technology. So, in 2012, Google made Motorola an offer it couldn't resist, and acquired Motorola Mobility for a whopping $12.5 billion. This gave Google all of Motorola's mobile-related patents, and their smartphone team. But despite everyone's high hopes, Motorola Mobility only continued to lose money under Google. By 2014, Apple's share of America's smartphone market went up from 46% to 53%, while Motorola's share shrank in half from 6.3% to 3.02%. But Google already got what it wanted from Motorola, the patents. It didn't have to endure any more losses, so in October 2014, Google sold Motorola Mobility to Lenovo for just $2.9 billion. That's $9.6 billion less than what they got it for just two years earlier. Though notably, Google retained all of Motorola's thousands of mobile patents as part of the sale. And it turns out, Lenovo haven't been able to leverage the Motorola brand the way they thought they would either. Since the sale, Motorola has been virtually wiped out from the very industry it founded. 
It is still alive, but barely. I mean, how many people do you know with Lenovo Motorola smartphones? Not too many, right? So far, we've been focusing a lot on Motorola Mobility, but that's not owned by Motorola anymore. So how did the other company, the real Motorola, Motorola Solutions, fare after Google bought Mobility in 2012? In a word, it flourished. From 2011, the year when the company split, to November 2019, Motorola Solutions' stock value soared by a massive 332%. Greg Brown, Motorola's CEO since 2008, is the person responsible for the company's massive turnaround. As Greg explains, quote, I knew from the first day I joined Motorola that the best part of the company was the part few people cared about. Motorola could do a lot more by doing less. So what exactly does Motorola Solutions do? Well, Motorola went back to hyper-focusing on what they were good at, pioneering new and better technology for industries in need. At the time, with school shootings, gun violence, and general crime rates on the rise, Motorola realized that one of the biggest industries ripe for technological innovation was security products, especially the security tech used by first-line responders. So, they began developing products like video surveillance, body cameras, in-car video systems, automatic number plate recognition, two-way radios, dispatch consoles, and more. This has proved to be a great move by Motorola. In fact, the turnaround has worked so well that in 2022, when many big tech companies struggled to grow, Motorola Solutions sales and profit figures both rose by double-digit percentages. Its cash flow from operations increased by 40%, securing 418th place in the Fortune 500. Turns out Motorola, the real Motorola at least, might not be dead after all. And there may also be a glimmer of hope for Motorola Mobility too. In 2019, they revealed a reboot of the famous Razer series by unveiling the first Motorola Razer folding smartphone, and it was really well received by critics. Since then, they've been working on newer versions of the Razer, but it's clear they still have a long way to go before they can get back to the lofty heights of where Motorola phones once were. Speaking of which, have you heard what's going on with Rolex? You've got to check this story next.